Grammar rule number 14, double negatives. This is page 95 of the writing manual, 95. Grammar rule number 14, double negatives. There are two rules on this page. They are under the heading other rare rules. Why? Because they are very, very rare. These two rules on this page, including double negatives, are extremely rare on the SAT. You will not see them very frequently. You might go several tests without seeing a single question that tests either of these rules. If you want an extremely high score, however, you're gonna need to know them in addition to the other rules you've learned. So what is a double negative? A double negative is exactly what it sounds like. It is when two negatives, a double negative, combine to form a positive. So if I say something like, I didn't not study for the test, uh, that means that I did study for the test. I, I didn't not study. Uh, this not and this not those two negatives combine to form a positive. So this sentence ends up saying, I did study for the test. Uh, if you didn't not study, then you did study. Now, it is slightly important to know that double negatives are not wrong. Um, if you were to, you know, let's say your parents are mad at you because you went to a party and you respond to them, you didn't tell me I couldn't go. So what you're doing here is you're combining two negatives uh, and your intention is to tell your parents basically that they did tell you you could go by not telling you that you couldn't go. So sometimes we use double negatives in our everyday lives to good effect. We use them purposely um, to, to convey a certain meaning. Uh, but on the SAT, double negatives are always wrong. So if we see two negatives combining to form a positive on the SAT, we need to know that uh, something needs to be corrected. So let's take a look before we do the tip off clue. Let's take a look at example one. Go ahead and read through number one and see if you can detect the double negative error. If not, uh, just keep listening because I'm about to tell you what it is right now. Though they have been exercising consistently for several months, the contestants have lost hardly no weight. Well, hardly means not a lot or barely any. So when you say they have lost barely no weight, barely plus no, barely no means a lot. When you say barely none, Barely none would mean not a lot of none, which means you have a lot. Uh, hopefully that makes sense to you. But yeah, you can't combine this hardly, this negative word, with this no, this other negative word. When we combine those two negatives, we get a positive. This sentence would actually mean that the contestants have lost weight, and that's obviously not what the writer of the, ten of the sentence intended. So what we can do here, probably the best change is to cross off this second negative and write any. Uh, the contestants have lost hardly any weight. If you got rid of the hardly, that would be okay too. Then you would just be saying the contestants have lost no weight. That's perfectly fine. However, it does seem like the writer of this, ten of this sentence intended to say that the contestants have lost some weight, but very little. And this change, the contestants have lost hardly any weight, implies more so that they have lost some weight, just not a lot. So this tip-off clue here, it's very specific. Double negatives has a very specific tip-off clue. It is going to be hardly, the word we just saw in example one, barely, another word that means hardly, and scarcely, yet another word, that is not how you spell scarcely. Hold on for a second. Scarcely combined with another negative such as, and I'll give you a couple of examples here, a few examples, such as not, no, or without. 
So again, if we see hardly, barely, or scarcely combined with another negative such as not, no, or without, we know there's most likely a double negative uh, in front of us and we are gonna need to change something. Let's go ahead and do one more example. Example two, read it all the way through and determine if there's a double negative. If there is, make a correction. In example two, we have the analyst believes that the arrangement between the two corporations will not last barely a month. So there's that combination of the two negatives. We have a barely, a barely, and that's our tip off clue, paired with a not, that's one of our other tip off clues. So these are two negatives. We are combining two negatives in such a way that we're forming a positive. This sentence actually means uh, although the writer probably didn't intend this, that the analyst believes that the arrangement between the two corporations will last a while. Um, so what we should do here is just get rid of one of these two uh, negatives. We can just cross off the not or the barely. You will make the meaning slightly different depending upon which negative you get rid of, but it's not a big deal. You just need to get rid of one of them. The day of the test, ETS will not underline each of those negatives individually and then force you to decide which one to get rid of. They will not do that to you. They will either underline both of them together or they will just underline one of them. That is all for double negatives. Very quick rule. Should be very simple as long as you remember your tip-off clues.